What I'm saying is that as long as the heir is a minor, he is no different from a slave, even though he is the legal owner of the estate. Rather, he is subject to guardians and caretakers until the time previously set by his father. So it is with us. When we were children, we were slaves to the elemental spirits of the universe. But when the appointed time arrived, God sent forth his son. He was born from a woman, born into a culture in which legalistic perversion of the Torah was the norm, so that he might redeem those in subjection to this legalism, and thus enable us to be made God's sons. Now because you are sons, God has sent forth into our hearts the spirit of his son, the spirit who cries out, Abba, that is, dear father. So through God, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son, you are also an heir. In the past, when you did not know God, you served as slave beings, which in reality are non-gods. But now you do know God, and more than that, you are known by God. So how is it that you turn back again to those weak and miserable elemental spirits? Do you want to enslave yourselves to them once more? You observe special days, months, seasons and years. I fear for you that my work among you has been wasted. Brothers, I beg of you, put yourselves in my place. After all, I put myself in your place. It isn't that you have done me any wrong. You know that it was because I was ill that I proclaimed the good news to you at first. And even though my physical condition must have tempted you to treat me with scorn, you did not display any sign of disdain or disgust. No, you welcomed me as if I had been an angel of God, as if I had been the Messiah Yeshua himself. So what has become of the joy you felt? For I bear you witness that had it been possible, you would have gouged out your eyes and given them to me. Have I now become your enemy because I tell you the truth? True, these teachers are zealous for you, but their motives are not good. They want to separate you from us, so that you will become zealous for them. To be zealous is good, provided always that the cause is good. Indeed, whether I am present with you or not, my dear children, I am suffering the pains of giving birth to you all over again, and this will go on until the Messiah takes shape in you. I wish I could be present with you now and change my tone of voice. I don't know what to do with you. Tell me. You who want to be in subjection to the system that results from perverting the Torah into legalism. Don't you hear what the Torah itself says? It says that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and one by the free woman. The one by the slave woman was born according to the limited capabilities of human beings. But the one by the free woman was born through the miracle working power of God, fulfilling his promise. Now to make a midrash on these things. The two women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai and bears children for slavery. This is Hagar. Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she serves as a slave along with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. For the Tanakh says, Rejoice, you barren women who does not bear children. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labour. For the deserted wife will have more children than the one whose husband is with her. That's Isaiah 51 verse 1. You brothers, like Yitzhak, are children referred to in a promise of God. But just as then the one born according to limited human capability persecuted the one born through the spirit's supernatural power, so it is now. Nevertheless, what does the Tanakh say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son, for by no means will the son of the slave woman inherit along with the son of the free woman. That's Genesis 21 verse 10. So brothers, we are children not of the slave woman, but of the free woman. What the Messiah has freed us for is freedom. Therefore stand firm and don't let yourselves be tied up again to a yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I shall all tell you that if you undergo Brit Mala, the Messiah will be of no advantage to you at all. Again I warn you, any man who undergoes Brit Mala is obligated to observe the entire Torah. You who are trying to be declared righteous by God through legalism have severed yourselves from the Messiah. You have fallen away from God's grace. 
for it is by the power of the Spirit who works in us, because we trust and are faithful, that we confidently expect our hope of attaining righteousness to be fulfilled. When we are united with the Messiah Yeshua, neither being circumcised nor being uncircumcised matters. What matters is trusting faithfulness, expressing itself through love. You are running the race well. Who has stopped you from following the truth? Whatever means of persuasion he used was not from the one who calls you. It takes only a little hametz to leaven the whole batch of dough. I am confident that since you are united with the Lord, you will take no other view. I am confident that the one who has been disturbing you, whoever he may be, will have to bear his punishment. And as for me, brothers, if I am still preaching that circumcision is necessary, why am I still being persecuted? If that were the case, my preaching about the execution stake would cause no offence whatever. I wish the people who are bothering you would go the whole way and castrate themselves. For, brothers, you were called to be free. Only do not let that freedom become an excuse for allowing your old nature to have its way. Instead, serve one another in love, for the whole of the Torah is summed up in this one sentence. Love your neighbour as yourself. Leviticus 19, verse 18. But if you go on snapping at each other and tearing each other to pieces, watch out, or you'll be destroyed by each other. What I'm saying is this, run your lives by the Spirit, then you will not do what your old nature wants. For the old nature wants what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit wants what is contrary to the old nature. These oppose each other, so that you find yourselves unable to carry out your good intentions. But if you are led by the spirit, then you are not in subjection to the system that results from perverting the Torah into legalism. And it is perfectly evident what the old nature does. It expresses itself in sexual morality, impurity, and indecency involvement with the occult and with drugs, in feuding, fighting, becoming jealous and getting angry, in selfish ambition, factualism, intrigue and envy, in drunkenness, orgies and things like this. I warn you now as I've warned you before, those who do such things will have no share in the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, Humility, self-control, nothing in the Torah stands against such things. Moreover, those who belong to the Messiah Yeshua have put their old nature to death on the stake, along with his passions and desires. Since it is through the Spirit that we have life, let it also be through the Spirit that we order our lives day by day. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Brothers, suppose someone is caught doing something wrong. You who have the Spirit should set him right, but in a spirit of humility, keeping an eye on yourself so that you won't be tempted to. Bear one another's burdens, in this way you will be fulfilling the Torah's true meaning, which the Messiah upholds. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is really nothing, he is fooling himself. So let each of you scrutinize his own actions, then if you do find something to boast about, at least the boasting will be based on what you have actually done, and not merely on a judgment that you are better than someone else. For each person will carry his own load. But whoever is being instructed in the word should share all the good things he has with his instructor. Don't delude yourselves. No one makes a fool of God. A person reaps what he sows. Those who keep sowing in the field of their own nature, of their old nature, in order to meet its demands, will eventually reap ruin. But those who keep sowing in the field of the spirit will reap from the spirit everlasting life. So let us not grow weary of doing what is good, for if we do not give up, we will in due time reap the harvest. Therefore, as the opportunity arises, let us do what is good to everyone, and especially to the family of those who are trustingly faithful. Look at the large letters I use as I close in my own handwriting. It is those who want to look good, outwardly, who are trying to get you to be circumcised. The only reason they are doing it is to escape the persecution for preaching about the Messiah's execution stake. For even those who are getting circumcised don't observe the Torah. On the contrary, they want you to get circumcised so that they can boast of having gained your adherence. But as for me, 
Heaven forbid that I should boast about anything except the execution stake of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, through him as far as I am concerned. The world has been put to death on the stake, and through him as far as the world is concerned, I have been put to death on the stake. For neither being circumcised nor being uncircumcised matters. What matters is being a new creation, and as many as order their lives by this rule, shalom be upon them and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From now on, I don't want anyone to give me any more chesulas, because I have scars on my own body to prove that I belong to Yeshua. The grace of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. Yeshua has also came to restore the fatherly relationship between us and Yahweh. Father has given us time to repent and be sorry for all our sins and transgression. Repent and he shall forgive you. Repent, beloved. Set your hearts right before him. It's not too late to repent. And go to God for forgiveness. He loves you even in judgment. He loves you. He will discipline his creation. He is just and faithful to his word. Repent. Say sorry and be truly sorry from your heart and mind. Believe in his son who died for your sins and transgressions so that you could be forgiven and go into the kingdom. But also believing in him means following his way and living a life pleasing to the most high. Follow after the ancient road. Think about what Yeshua taught and live by it. You have your guide, the Holy Spirit. Listen to him and follow his every command. Believe also that Yeshua rose from the dead after three days to prove that he conquered death. Believe that he spent 40 days teaching his disciples in the new covenant, the renewed covenant, the law of the spirit. Believe he ascended up at the Father's right hand and believe he saved you on the cross. And at the moment you believe you become a new creation in Messiah, in Mashiach. Born again in spirit, by the living waters of the Holy Spirit. Accept him in your heart and life and begin to live anew for Mashiach. In Yeshua's name, Amen. Hallelujah.